The contrast function now reads like this. We sum over all the outer cumulants of the rotated data. So y indicates the rotated data, while x hat indicates the whitened data. The rotation matrix is given here. So that's the, the Givens rotations. And this is the expression that we have to calculate if you want to ca um, compute the value of the contrast function as a function of the rotation angle for one particular Givens rotations. Now these are a lot of terms to calculate. If we are in a 10 dimensional space, that would be uh, 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, 100,000 terms, because each of these indices runs over 10 values. Um, that's a lot to compute. However, if you look at the structure of the Gibbons rotation, uh, we see that uh, it is largely an identity matrix. Well, it's not so visible in the four-dimensional case, but if it were larger, we would uh, see even more clearly that only the two rows and two columns contain values uh, different from the identity matrix, namely cosine, sine, minus sine, cosine. The rest, so in this case, these four values would be the identity matrix. And obviously, multiplying the data with the identity matrix does not change, so the data only changes in two dimensions. And that means we can restrict our i to two components, to, um, and all the other components would be here uh, and would be constant, would not depend on phi. Only this part depends on phi, but not the constant. Now, if we've chosen i to be n or m, we again see from the rotation matrix that the values of the rotation matrix are zero whenever the second index, indicating the column so going in this direction, is not n or m. So, therefore, we can also restrict the second index to be n or m. These are now so we have to calculate these uh, these constant terms once, and here we only have to sum over 2, 4, 8, 16, 32 different values, because each index runs over two values. This restriction here also guarantees that each r is either a cosine or a sine value. And together with the squaring, we realize that any term that results from this has eight cosine and sine values. So we can write the objective function in this form shown here below. A constant plus a sum over prefactors times eight cosine and sine values. So the exponent here is eight minus p, and here is an exponent p, um, so that we have eight overall eight factors here. can always be written in this way. We can simplify even further by realizing the following two things. So the one is that a rotation of the data by 90 degrees does not change the value. So if we imagine we have some data some data distribution and we and and such a data distribution would have some statistical dependencies uh, between this component and this component now if you rotate this by 90 degrees this corresponds simply to a, to a exchange of the components plus sign changes and that does not change the amount of statistical dependency between the components so rotation by 90 degree should not change uh, psi, the contrast function. So the contrast function has a 90 degree periodicity. This means it can always be written in such a form. Right? A constant plus a term that oscillates with uh, um, four times per 
uh, a full rotation, which would correspond to a 90 degree rotation, but it may also oscillate eight times through a full rotation uh, that would imply a 45 degree periodicity, but it also implies a 90 degree periodicity, right? So any sort of multiple of four is would be a valid oscillation. So we do sort of a if you're familiar with that, a Fourier transform, and we only keep those frequencies that are multiples of four. So that's the first observation. The second observation is, uh, we have seen here that each term is a product of eight cosine and sine values. Now we know from trigonometry that if you square a sine or cosine, or you multiply sine and cosine, that you get frequency doubling. So the frequency doubles if you multiply a sine or cosine with another sine or cosine. Now if you have eight terms, you do that sort of three times, right? So from, from one to two, then to four, then to eight. That means the highest frequency that you get would be in, would be eight. And this means that here you can actually truncate the, uh, the series uh, at that point, because these frequencies cannot occur, uh, cannot arrive from this equation. Okay, and that means we can write our objective function in this form. And that now is really a simple form. We simply have to calculate the constants. Uh, and there are one, two, three, four, five constants. These are the amplitudes, uh, the sort of the, the, the constant amplitude, the amplitude of the oscillation with frequency 4 and the amplitude of the, of the oscillation with frequency 8. These are phase shifts that are possible. So we have these five constants that depend in a complicated way on the cumulants before rotation. So once you have calculated these constants, um, yeah, it's such a simple equation you can simply, simply calculate, I don't know, 1000 values between 0 and uh, 2 pi and then take the min the maximum we want to maximize this and thereby get the optimal rotation angle okay so if you have that we can now devise the following algorithm uh first we whiten the data so we remove the mean and correct the variances such that the data is guaranteed to be uncorrelated, and we know from principal component analysis how to do that. So this is our original data, and then we have um, whitened data. I called the whitened data x hat before, but uh, now in, in this context I call it y, for a reason that will be clear in a minute. Then we take two variables, two components, so n and m, we write down the Givens rotation in these two components and calculate these five constants and then we optimize the angle with this equation. So this leads to a new Y which is rotated within the space of these two components. Yes, and then we simply repeat the process, right? We pick another two axes, again do uh, an optimal Gibbons rotation within these two axes, and reiterate that um, until convergence, where you can define the convergence in different ways. You could say, well, I just iterate for, for a thousand times or something, or you say you iterate until the last... Um, 10 Gibbons rotations, let's say, yield an angle less than 1 degree or something. Yeah. Okay, and then you stop and then you're done. So this is one IC algorithm based on cumulants. There are many different algorithms, but with this one at least you have an idea how one can do ICA.